This is the first lesson in a unit on probability and statistics. Probability and statistics are an entirely different area of math than we've done all year. Um, towards the end of the last lessons, you probably saw how trigonometry and algebra are very connected. Probability and statistics is more about collecting data, finding out information, finding out chances of things happening, and then also kind of making decisions from that data. So even a lot of the information you hear um, about the current crisis with COVID, you'll hear things about statistics like this many people died or this many people have the disease and you'll hear probabilities for different groups of people um, to have to go to the hospital or to die from the disease. And all of that is from information they're collecting and then finding chances, which are kind of the two parts of probability and statistics. So we're gonna start with probability um, but even in this probability, there's always data that's been collected from people. So in our first one, it says in a class of students, the following data table summarizes how many students play an instrument or a sport. What is the probability that a student chosen randomly from the class does not play an instrument? So this information could have just come from information that was in a computer, possibly at a school, or they could have surveyed people for this information as well. So here we have two things, plays an instrument, does not play an instrument, plays a sport, does not play a sport. And we can see that information um, organized. So plays an instrument and plays a sport. If they have both of them, there's two people that do both. Um, plays an instrument, does not play a sport, is 20, and so on. So the first thing we want to do, if it's not already provided in the table, is find some totals of the information. So this helps because then we can see the total number of people surveyed. We can just put total here and total here. And also right now, the information about plays or sport is split up in determine, you know, based on whether or not they play an instrument or not. The total people that play a sport, if we add these two together, is five. The total people that do not play a sport is 25. The total people that play an instrument is 22 and adding the total people that do not play an instrument is eight. So from here, if we add up the total of either the column or the row, it should always be the same. And we see it is here, which is 30 people. So 30 total people were in this um, study. The question says, what is the probability that a student chosen randomly from the class does not play an instrument? So we want to figure out two things. First off, what is the total number of students in the class? Because we're cho choosing one randomly from the class, and we see that that's 30. So that goes on the bottom of our fraction. And then we're also looking for the ones that do not play an instrument. The total that do not play an instrument are right here. Okay. So I'm going to try to use this um, square or rectangle around the number that goes on the bottom, circle on the top throughout the lesson. So the answer here is 8 out of 30. We can write this out as the probability. Probability is actually a function. So we're going to write P of no instrument. Okay. So moving on to the next problem. This um, collected information has to do whether or not people have a brother, whether or not people have a sister, and then... Um, when those two things are both true. So we're gonna put on our totals first. And this will go a lot faster as I do more questions. So I'm just gonna put T for total. I could you know, write more if I wanted to. So here I have 17 total people have a brother, 10 people do not have a brother, six people have a sister, and 21 people do not have a sister. When I look in both directions, my total adds up to 27. So once my table is complete, we'll see the question. What is the probability that a student chosen randomly from the class? So that tells me that my bottom number is the whole class, so that's 27. And then we want to know has a brother and a sister. So if we want both of them to be true, this is called the intersection of these two rows, or a row and a column. So that's two people have both, and that's what goes on the top. So this is the probability, and we can write sister and 
brother. So if I was going to pick one of these 27 people randomly, I have a two out of 27 chance that they have either a sister or a brother. So our next table is about whether or not people completed their homework and whether or not people passed a test or failed the test. So once again, we do totals. And we have 18 and 9. This way we have 17 and 10. So once again, this one actually adds up to 27 as well. So this is, could just be a class. And this could be something the teacher could keep track of. If they wanted to organize the information, they could see, you know, set a completion rate, maybe 80% for homework, and then see if the people passed the test. So here we're finding the probability that a student chosen randomly from the class passed the test or completed the homework. So this is a slightly different question. We don't need both of them to be true. We just need one or the other to be true, or both of them could be true. So this is probably the trickiest of the past three. This is probability past or completed homework. And maybe I want to write past the test just to be a little more specific, um, but that's fine. So here, we want to include all of the people that completed the homework, and we want to include all of the people that passed the test. So we actually add these two numbers on the top. But if you think about this, if I include this whole 17 and this whole 18, two times I've counted these 15 people. So we actually have to subtract the 15 because we've double counted it. So I do minus 15. And then still we're talking about selecting from the whole class. So that's out of 27. So this one is just slightly more work. We would just simplify the numerator, which is 20. So we get 20 out of 27. And that should make sense because basically we've included all of these cells, the people that did both, right? the people that just completed the homework but didn't pass the test, and the people that passed the test but did not complete the homework. But we did not include these seven people, and if we look here, 20 right, plus 7 would be the complete 27. So in this table on the next page, we have a similar situation where we're counting brothers, sisters, whether or not we have them, and so on. Um, so here's my totals. 20, 5, 9, and 16. So we have 25 total here. Now this question is going to move into something that's called conditional probability. So I'm actually going to write that at the top of the page. And conditional probability starts off with some sort of condition that needs to be met. So we're not going to be looking at the total group. We're going to say we're only going to look at these people and find out some probability for them. So here's our question. It says, what is the probability that a student has a sister given that they do not have a brother? So this word given means that we're only looking at these people. So we know they don't have a brother. We're not asking if they do or they don't. We know they do not have a brother. Okay. So we actually restrict ourselves to a certain section of the table. So whatever the given is, we only look in that section of the table. So it's almost as if these two parts don't exist. I wouldn't cross them off, but my point is like we're really focusing on that one piece. So we're going to write P of sister given no brother. So the total now, we can't use the 25. We just have to use this 5. That's the total in that row or in that column. Sorry about that. And then we're saying sister. Okay, so sister is this 2. So we actually have 2 out of 5. So that's just something to look for. It's actually a main focus of this unit. A lot of stuff is going to get into conditional probability. Um, we still have some regular probability as well, but that's how conditional probability works. So I have one more example of that at the bottom of the page. This one has to do with gender and grades. 
So we'll do our totals. Ten, sixteen, eighteen. So we have twenty six on this one. So this one says, and this one's not going to say that word given. So it's a little bit trickier, but we have to interpret the way the um, question is worded. What is a probability that a student who has an A? So we're not asking if they have an A. We're not saying what's the chance they have an A. We're saying that they definitely have an A. Okay, and we're asking is a male. So we're saying of those students that have A's, what's the chance that they're male? So the given here, if I write this out, we want to know what's the probability they're male given, and given means we already know it, given the student has an A. So we're only looking, because A is the thing that's given, we're only looking in this row this time, okay, because that's the given information, so this is going to be my bottom number, and then we're talking about what's the probability they're male, so that's the top number. So this is 5 out of 8 for that answer. So we have these different types of probabilities. We have basic probability, we have and probability where two things are true, we have or probability where one thing or the other is true, and then lastly we have this conditional probability where we don't look at the total, we're just looking at a certain row or column in the table.